Hi, I'm Patrick Pollan, CEO and founder of Favro, and this is the Learn From Leaders podcast. The background to this show is that Favro customers are some of the most innovative companies in the world. Enterprises wanting to be more agile, software as a service companies scaling fast, and game developers and publishers wanting to master live ops. So we get to know some truly inspiring leaders in product development, marketing, operations, sales, executive management. And what we do here is that we interview them about leadership so we can all learn from them. Let's go. So welcome back to my uh, conversation with Frank. And um, I hope you have seen the first one where we talked about uh, avoiding uh, burnout when you're fast growing. Uh, but now we're going to talk about uh, how to do asynchronous uh, collaboration uh, right and you know how to get the whole culture thing right. Um, I, I think this is quite an interesting topic. Um, and um, I think many of us, uh, you, know, you, you know, during COVID, um, communication definitely became you know, more asynchronous. And, and I think that culture, um, what culture means, became a whole different thing because before, you know, everyone was in the office. Um, you know, you can build it very much face to face. Now you have to build kind of a remote, you know, culture. And the way it's looking right now, uh, most companies are are moving into some kind of you know hybrid you know, organization where it's being remote, but you know, to some extent in the office. And I think there, are, you know, there, there's a spectrum of you know exactly how much of this companies are doing. But but I do think we're we're just never going to go back to how it was before COVID. Um, so, so I'm looking forward to having a conversation with you around, you know, your experiences and your views on, on how to get this right. Um, so, so let's start with like asynchronous, you know, collaboration. I mean, how, um, you know, what does that mean to you? And, and, and what do you think are like bad examples of that and good examples of that? Certainly, Patrick. Um, I think, I mean, besides what you described that, uh, you know, we are in a hybrid world, we are also in a, in a, um, in a, uh, I would say in a global world, that means we work also with people, uh, at least in, in my experience uh, or my um, job experience, I worked with people who are not just in the same office or the same time zone. We had those different time zone, different regions. And that made it even more complicated, you know, to have meetings or to meet and to collaborate same time, same place. Um, and when you have this, it's a very sh- probably a, a shorter time window than you were used to, like the eight hours, which you are in most countries uh, are the normal average work time. That means um, you have less hours and you need to spend them more valuable. And um, and the least valuable thing is for useless meetings. And um, this is, I think, the, the, the most time-consuming thing you can do, uh, not only to have the meeting, but also about the participation of the meeting. So um, make sure that when you do the meetings for instance like who should be there and who should contribute and who can contribute and record stuff you know like um, i spent more time or i had time so i spent more times in meetings than actually doing work and um i've seen others i mean i'm not an individual contributor i'm so to say a leader or someone who is i'm not producing outputs so much than others do i mean my outputs are non-tangible sometimes but imagine you have let's say 10 meetings a week and every and every one of the team is in the meetings. Um, the time they spend in the meetings, they don't work. I mean, sure, you can say meetings are work, but um, and a programmer is not measured by how many hours he spends in the meetings. He's measured by finishing his piece of of work he's supposed to do and he committed to do. So that's one thing. And the other is like um, you know, like um, asynchronous things. You know, like um, I think the times of workshops where you spend a day in a workshop, I think. We need to reconsider this. I, um, I personally, for instance, I don't like to spend uh, a day in a workshop on on a screen. Um, and if I do this, um, um, I expect the others to do this too. And um, not everyone likes to sit the entire time. I mean, my my butt hurts. <laughs> That's it for a while. Um, and then there's there's also things like you need to be, you need to consider that. Let's say um um let's say you have to be super super um focused when you're on the screen, while in a room you are a little bit like. There are social interactions which are happening not on screen, so it's super, it's it's it's, it's super brain intense. <laughs> mm-hmm. I have a question there. You know, I, you know, I remember you know some years ago when, 
you know, I was running, you know, my, my previous company, Handsoft, and, you know, we also had a lot, you know, a lot of customers in the game industry. And, and, uh, I remember visiting, you know, um, you know, one, one, uh, one studio, a very great studio. And, um, they had, um, in, in their meeting rooms, they had a little, um, basically like a little pamphlet. It, it was, you know, put inside plastic. Um, and, and it said, you know, when you run a meeting, consider these things. Um, I actually thought that was pretty cool. Um, because you know, what, what they've wrote was, was good stuff. I mean, for example, start the meeting by, you know, stating like, you know, you know, what's the purpose of this meeting? You know, what is the, um, you know, what, what, what's the, what's the deliverable of this meeting, et cetera, et cetera. Et cetera right. Um, do you, um, you know, you know, have you done something like that? I mean, it, you know, in, in an online world, uh, you know, you know, what, what, what's your view on, you know, kind of, let's say meeting formats, because, you know, um, you know, if, if we go back to, you know, the, you know, uh, the, 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 the previous, you know, like part one of our conversation, when we talked about burnout, you know, you also mentioned a little bit about meetings and, 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 uh, that, you know, there's a lot of meetings that, you know, maybe aren't really needed. Um, so, you know, you know, to make meetings efficient, uh, I mean, what would be your advice for, you know, what format of a meeting? Yeah. First of all, I mean, to start off with the invite, right? I mean, like. Um, I always um, try to find an agreement with with the people I work with and also, I mean, in the companies I work with that you should establish a sort of, I would say, um, a purpose of the meeting, like you said, and what expected to bring to the meeting. So what, what really, I mean, we talked about it last time about stress. What really stresses me out if I'm invited to a meeting and I don't know what the meeting is about, what's expected of me, and um, what I usually die to, to, fa- to clarify this before the meeting. So, but... To make my life easier, if someone invites me, it would be great to have an, an, an let's say, sort of let's say, purpose and what the outcome is of the meeting. What should we achieve? And what what is different when we uh, finish that meeting? Right? That makes it super clear about uh, what we are trying to do there, and then it makes me also easier to decide if I even can contribute. If I'm not providing any value, I don't need to go there. And if it's value for me, I don't need to go even. Also, because it can be recorded for me. So if I find something interesting, I ask, for instance, others to record it for me. So if I find time to watch, I will watch. Um, but, you know, for the meeting per se, how you structure a meeting, I think, like you said, it should have a clear purpose and should have a, a desired outcome. And um, But, you know, this is a meeting, I think, where the problem is clear, but sometimes, or let's say not the problem, but the purpose of meeting. You have different type of meetings, right? You have... There's these ceremonies, right? In ceremonies, I think you can um, do a lot of things asynchronous um, without, let's say, losing the the power of it. Um, with a, let's say, um, a problem-solving meeting or, let's say, a brainstorm meeting, that's a bit different, though, but I think you should also, let's say, time box these, right? Saying, okay, this is for two hours, and that's what to find. Like, we don't need to find the answer now, and let's, at the end of the meeting, we sit together, see how far we came, Let's schedule another one. Um, but we shouldn't try to, to solve everything, but we don't even know what we are so, so how, how we are solving things. Um, can I maybe touch, um, uh, um, or let me touch a bit the um, the ceremonies, because I think, um, you know, we talk about asynchronous thing. I think this is something, an example. I can give you a concrete example, this, a, a daily stand-up. I mean, like, um, first of all, this daily stand-up thing, um, I know how important it is. It's about, you know, like synchronizing work, but also being, uh, uh, keeping alignment, share, and let's say asking for help when needed. But I believe it can be done also asynchronous. Like for instance, um, we did it in, um, at Riot Games, for instance, um, we, we used a tool called status hero where people enter their status and it's been put to slash, uh, uh, to, uh, sorry, been, um, uh, pushed to Slack. So people were entering the status, what they were working on. Um, we, we asked other questions and let's say what they've done, what you're going to complete. But it still gave an, in, uh, the idea was to prompt um, um, information to others about what's going on and also give that's the opportunity to, um, to, um, to trigger conversations between the people who are affected by whatever will be put in your, in your daily stand-up tool. Um, this reduced a lot of, let's say, um, um, you know, um, I would say, um, time you know like because you then let's say if i do a daily standard right i do it as in the morning on my time and someone who is already in the night i think that's not really the stand up so to say right it's just a sync um 
but you know, like if you do it asynchronous, you can still have it maybe uh, instead of five times a week, you can have it on a Monday, on a Friday in person, but Wednesday to Thursday, maybe uh, not in person. I'm not let's say, saying you should compromise on the things like team reflection or team review. I think that's important to do it in person. But maybe this, I would say this is this kind of information sharing thing. This can be, I think, uh, a lot can be asynchronous. I have, um, I mean, since you were touching upon stand-ups, I have, um, I have a I have a deep question. Are you ready? Yeah. So, um, you know, there's there's you know you know many people you know from Steve Jobs to you know Elon Musk to others that that you know, stress is very hard. You know, that if you're not needed in a meeting, you shouldn't be there. So and and um, you know there's there's a point in that. Um, but then uh, in um, you know in 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 many agile uh, you know practices like for example uh, Scrum, you know you have a concept of you know chicken and pig, where you know for example an executive who's not part of the um, of, of of the squad um, uh, can still participate in the stand up you know but but it has to be quiet right it, it's more just being in the loop um, and um, you know, so, so in, you know, in one way, you know, you can see this as kind of like, you know, two, you know, somewhat different ideas around how to approach it. I think I think both ideas are good, but um, you know, you know, what's your view on, let's say, a little bit of balance between this? It, it I mean, it, uh, first of all, it depends on what you talk and your standards about, right? If it's like, um, you know, uh, I think that the standups is for the primarily for the team and not so much for, let's say, leadership or for um, a stakeholder. Because I mean, what's the value he gets out of it? I mean, like, um, this is usually daily things in order to achieve the goals, right? That's where you talk about how well we are doing um, and what can we change in order to be still successful. Are we still achieving our goals? I don't see that, let's say, the, 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 I would say the value for a leader to be in this conversation. I mean, like, I think the leader or, let's say, the, the, the customer or stakeholder, they should be more interested in the outcome Come, we are trying to achieve and looking at the outcome, looking at it with, uh, with, with us together on the outcome and, and de determining if we were successful or not successful. However, maybe there is someone who would like to observe, but I would still ask the team for permission because, you know, that's, I need to, as a team, we need to have a safe space where we talk about everything, right? About, um, you know, uh, struggles, even, let's say, uh, uh, things which are maybe, let's say, right now, very, I would say, um, critical. But if you don't have the right context as a stakeholder, you can probably get the wrong idea about, oh, this team has problems and it's not really performing, whatever. And um, But, you know, daily struggles are real. I mean, like everyone, not, nothing goes um, after plan. So I would be careful, um, including, um, let's say, leaders and stakeholders into that. And there's the other question about it. Shouldn't the person spend his time somewhere else? <laughs> not in our stand up I mean like imagine we do it every day in five days and we have our 50 minutes and now it's two hours not two hours sorry um, about an hour or more than an hour whereas he could do some or she could do something else you know I think this is a very interesting conversation I mean you know if I can play a little bit devil's advocate here you know I think um, on um, um, you know on one hand I mean you know i you know, back at university, I studied a lot of social psychology. So I'm the first one to say that, um, you know, even if you know the executive who's who's kind of being a, you know, a, a chicken in the in the in the stand up, you know, being quiet, uh, he was kind of being outside the circle, being in the corner, you know, even if it's virtually, you know, it's still going to uh, disturb, you know, the group dynamic. Or you know, the, you talked about safe space. I mean, you know. It, it's not going to be the same. People are going to be like, "Okay, shit, you know, this person is here." Um, so, 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 so that's that's a that's a drawback, you know, for sure. Um, on the other hand, if you, if you have like a very, if you have, if you got your culture like really right and people are very comfortable, um, I think I think then it works well. But uh, you know, my devil advocate kind of argument would be that, you know, um, a lot of um, leadership advice. Know, to executives would be that you know you, you you need to not be too stuck you know on 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 that like high level you know you need to have a little bit of your your finger to the pulse on you know what what happens in the day to day business you know I mean one common practice with many companies is that you know um, executives need to 
you know, spend one day in support, you know, uh, per month, you know, stuff like that. Uh, you know, just, 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 just to be, you know, you know, have that finger on the pulse and, and, uh, you know, just, just simply listening to like, well, Hey, how does the conversation go in a development, uh, stand up, you know, in the sales stand up, um, you know, any kind of, you know, meeting, you know, on that level, it's, it's, uh, it can be a, can be a good tool to just, you know, get a little bit of a feel for, you know, what's going on. I actually remember, you know, I'm from Sweden. And, you know, probably the most famous uh, Swedish king uh, was called Gustav Vasa. Um, he was the one, you know, liberating us, for, us from the Danes. And, you know, he was famous for that. You know, he would, um, he, you know, he would put on a cape and he would walk the streets of Stockholm uh, incognito. Uh, and he just wanted to observe, like, you know, what are people talking about in the pubs? What's going on? You know how does it how does it look? You know he wanted to get out of the castle and 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 just just kind of you know get that kind of like direct kind of contact with you know how things are. So you know I I find this this conversation to be very interesting because there's no super there's no like right answer there's no um you know it it, it, it it's it, it's a lot of balance you know it's it's complicated yeah I mean I agree a little bit. To that, you know, like yeah, that you should probably keep in touch with your team and maybe also identify, identify how the team struggles. And if I would, let's say, um, attend uh, as a leader and let's say a stand up or another meeting, what I would not look at is the what's being discussed. It's more about how it's being discussed, dynamics, right? How the team works together. This is, I think, the more value you can get out of it, because you know, this is. I mean, if you go into the the really daily struggle of let's say one let's say scrum team and you have let's say multiple scrum teams. I mean, imagine you spending all the time in in all the teams in order to get the full picture because you are just looking into a, a small segment of something maybe bigger. And if you want to find out how the dynamic or how the health is, that's probably an, a nice thing to do. But again, could be recorded. You don't have to be there. And if something is recorded, it, it lowers the ba barrier not totally, but a little bit about you know safe space and being honest because you know this person is in there. But for instance, if you're a leader and you are, you're saying you're going to be quiet and then you suddenly start and ask verification question, that's just really confusing. And this, uh, I w this is something which destroys totally, um, I think, not only the purpose, but also the dynamic in such a meeting. Yeah, I, th I think you said two very, very smart things there. You know, one, you know, if if you are going to be the chicken in the meeting, you better be the chicken. You, you, even if you really, really want to say something, you, you better shut up. You know, because as soon as you open your mouth and you you walking in with you know a lot of authority, I you know you're ruining the whole thing. You know, you you know you can you know if there are things you want to act on, you know, just that has to have it happen in in a different form, right? So I think you're super right about that, and I think it's kind of like you know self, uh, kind of like um, trying to find the right word in English here, but um, you know the the you know the executive who doesn't understand that if you're if you're using you know your 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 card as, as being a chicken, but you you still you know get yourself involved in the meeting and you 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 start to you know then suddenly becomes a reporting meeting and you kind of ruin the whole thing, you know. So so I think you very easily will know the leader who understands you know how to do this right. But the second thing you said I think is good is that you know recording meetings and having that as a practice is is, is pretty good. You know it can serve as documentation for anyone who couldn't be there, but you could actually also use it for as a way for for someone. Uh, you know, who, who wants to just listen in and, and kind of do exactly what you said, you know, maybe analyze not um, what exactly was being discussed, but like how it was being discussed, you know? I mean, I mean, for example, if you listen into a retrospective and it's like, like, you know, you know, you know, how do they do retrospectives? That's quite an interesting question. Um, you know, you shouldn't interfere with, you know, like the, the, the what of the retrospective, but, but if you feel like, you know, are they actually doing a good retrospective? You know, that that's an interesting question because they say if they're not, you know, maybe you want to have a you know a coach, you know, helping helping the squad to to improve their retrospective skills. You know, I mean, I I can definitely see that um, you know with a lot of the you know the companies and you know teams that we work with um, that uh, you know the skill in how to do a good retrospective is extremely varied. I mean, some teams are like absolutely amazing in how they do retrospectives. And and some they think they do retrospectives, but they don't. They really do more of a reporting meeting. Yeah, or they do a uh, let's see if they. I've seen retrospectives where no uh, actions been let's see outcome of or an action been taken out of it. 
And for me, I always say this, and I guess with someone watching who will know me, I always say if you do a retrospective with, uh, with at least with, without any action, then it's a coffee, a cup meeting. It's like really like uh, you waste the time for everyone. So there should be always concrete actions. And, none, it, and the quality of a retro is not defining the number of things you take out there or the number of actions. It's more like have actions, act on them, and uh, um, and, 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 and look look at them, how you're, let's see, if they, if they drive the change you are aiming for. Yeah, that, that, you know, that's so good. I mean, the problem is typically like either it's like nothing or it's like an enormous list, which is never going to be done. I mean, being able to come up with, okay, these are the things, you know, that we want to take action on and then actually do the prioritization. Okay, like what are like the one or two things we're going to focus on next week? You know, you know, doing that extra step is really something that sets a team which is good at this apart from a team which is mediocre. Um yeah, that, that that's really good. You know, I have to ask you one more thing. You know, before we uh, before we wrap up, um, I mean, culture. I mean, how um, you know, how, you know, now when we are more online, um, you know, at least to some extent, um, you know, you know, what what's your view on like you know how building a, a strong culture? Because it's you know, if we if we can't gather around the water cooler, you know, and we're not maybe having after work and and you know these kind of things. You know, you know, how, how do you build a culture when we are fully or partly remote? I mean, it's it's super tough, uh, to be honest. And um, I have been uh, only one in one company who's, which I'm working right now, which is predominantly remote. Uh, we have hubs where we can meet, but um, this company has built this culture completely um, um, without, let's say, having, let's say, everyone at the same place. Um, however, I think uh, you can do wherever in which uh, whatever environment you are you can do i think contribute a little bit to build a good culture like for instance i mean like uh, if you just have let's say in your calendar meetings 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 work maybe find some space where you can have let's say interactions with your team like they talk also about um let's say um getting to know each other it's super hard if you never met someone in person <laughs> i've been for instance uh, um sorry it's a, it's a side note but i would like to mention this like i met someone he said frank i thought you are taller I think you look differently, and this is a it's a it's a thing which you which no one told to me, right? And but you know, when you build a culture, I think uh, have room where you do something together online, right? For instance, and and uh, and uh, and one of my teams we played Among Us as a team, um, um, and this was amazing. We it do was the same. So good, yeah. It was so cool. Uh, we loved it. Or we had, um, let's see, um, we shared what we had for dinner. So basically, um, the company um, gave us um, a vouchers. We spent them on DoorDash and then we sat together on a, a, a agreed time and we, then we were talking about stuff, not co uh, work, but games about, um, you know, what we saw on TV and ate together and we shared what we ate. And this is, um, I think, builds a great culture, like trying a little bit to, in an online world, to um, to replicate uh, the real world, you know, like um, we had also uh, like the things like office or uh, let's say we have, let's say, um, when we are, let's say, having a, let's say, an open channel you know where everyone can uh, log into when he is or she is feels like um, i'm not only to do focus work but i would like to have a screen where i see more co-workers and 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 just to ask questions or so or collaborate and let's say while we are typing and, and and talking a bit about things not really let's say a workshop but still the possibility to to exchange a bit or like like a moment of thought or uh, what do you think about that this this helps a lot but you know um but, but i think the culture shapes also a little bit itself like we as leaders, we, we we set a bit the the bar for the culture. So, for instance, if I don't share anything about me and don't be vulnerable, how do I expect others to be that? So, um, I think we have to 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 be the torchbearers a little bit, and um, but also giving room, as I mentioned to you before, like uh, building a great culture is not like you have a you have let's say something you you meet and you go straight to the point. Uh, take a time and uh, reach out and. And check in with each other and 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 ask about let's say have you seen this or that you know like having uh, real life conversations. Um, another thing you could do is like foster that. I mean, I have for instance, and colleagues who live nearby, and we always talk about we didn't do it yet, but we always talk about look, we could maybe meet and have a, a we work for a day together and we do something collaborative, uh, and this works too, right? Um, you don't have always the luxury to meet in person, but I think. Um, 
there are so many, I think, tooling which helps us, you know, like um, where you could also, let's say, um, um, foster good collaboration. Like if, it's, if, you, if, you, if you have an idea or thought, put it on, 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 on the board and uh, let others to look over it, get feedback and, and, and talk about it. And um, just like uh, you do it physical, now you do it digital. Uh, that, that, that's great. You know, um, you know, Frank, thank you so much for, um, you know, sharing, you know, so many thoughts in, you know, both, uh, you know, part one and in this, uh, you know, part two. Um, for all of you listening, I, I hope you, you know, listen to uh, both of these um, and I'll see you, you know, in the next one. Thank you so much for having me, Patrick. I hope you enjoyed this conversation. If you did, you know what to do. Share it in your social media so more people can take part and learn. And one more thing, check out Favro Academy on favro.com for many more learnings. Thanks for tuning in.